Energy and Change. Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about stored energy in fuels. Let's start by talking about how energy is transferred in a food or an energy chain. We know that we need energy for everything that we do. The energy that all living organisms pass on to each other comes from the sun. The sun gives energy to the plants. The plants transfers energies to the insects and smaller organisms. And as the other animals eat each other, the energy gets transferred to them. This forms a chain in the transfer of energy that comes from the sun. What are fuels? Fuels are stored energy that is waiting to be used. For example, an apple in a fruit bowl has energy that is waiting to be used. Remember, the apple that grew on the tree has energy in it that came from the sun. The energy that is in the apple is energy that is waiting to be used. We call this energy input energy. As soon as you bite into the apple, the energy gets transferred to your body. When this energy gets transferred to your body, it allows you to do things like jump, skip and run. We can also call this energy happening energy or an output energy because it allows you to do something. So, we can say that food is fuel because energy is stored in it. The body uses the energy in food to do its work. The energy in food is released very slowly into your body. Fossil fuels. What are fossil fuels? Fossil fuels are fuels that formed in the past from the remains of living organisms. These fuels are non-renewable. This means that once these energy sources are used up, they cannot be renewed. The three types of fossil fuels are coal, oil and natural gas. How did these fossil fuels form? Millions of years ago, the earth was very moist. When living organisms like plants and animals died, they sank to the bottom of the ocean and swamps. They slowly started to decompose and over millions of years, they were covered by clay and sand and minerals to form these fossil fuels. If you look at picture one below, you will see the dead plants and animal organisms that sank to the bottom of the ocean. In picture two, Layers of sand covered these organisms over long periods of time. In picture 3, you will see that these organisms formed into coal, oil and natural gas. How did this happen? Let's discuss this further. Coal Coal was formed when plant matter like trees, shrubs and ferns decomposed and were covered by layers of sand over millions of years. Because of the heat and the pressure deep underground, it hardened and formed into coal. Now, millions of years later, we have many uses for coal. It provides us with heat that can be used to heat our homes and to cook our food. Our main uses of coal are coal power plants. These power plants use coal to produce electricity which we use today. Oil. Oil formed when algae and tiny sea organisms died and sank to the bottom of the ocean and was buried under layers of sand. Over millions of years, the Dead Sea animals changed into oil under the intense pressure underground. As the Earth's features changed over millions of years, some places that were oceans became land. That is why oil can also be found on land. Today, this oil is pumped from underground. We call this oil crude oil. Crude oil is distilled or processed to make products like petrol, diesel, paraffin, candle wax and plastic. Natural gas. Natural gas was formed the same way as oil was formed 
except that more heat and pressure was applied to the Dead Sea animals underground, which led them to further decompose and turn into a gaseous form. Natural gas is pumped through pipes from deep underground so that we can use it to cook food, heat water, and heat our homes using gas stoves and gas cylinders and gas heaters. Some of these natural gases are called methane gas, butane gas, and propane gas. Fuels in transport We depend on fuel for nearly all of our daily transport. For example, petrol and diesel, which is extracted and processed from crude oil, is used as fuels in cars, buses, trucks, boats, diesel trains, and aeroplanes. Remember, the energy from these fuels that we use today comes from energy that was stored underground for millions of years. Burning fuels in wood. Look at the picture of the burning forest. Remember, the energy from the sun is stored in the wood of the trees. The energy in the wood is the fuel that the fire needs to burn. The oxygen in the air helps the fire to burn. In order for the fire to burn, it needs an input energy. A matchstick or lightning can be the input energy that helps to start the fire. So, fuels need an input energy to set it alight. The air in the oxygen gas keeps the fire burning. And when the fire burns, it gives an output energy such as heat and light. How oxygen helps fuels to burn? If you look at the picture, you will notice that the candle is still burning under the first glass. Why is this so? If you look closely, you will see that the glass containers are not the same size. What does this tell you? The time it takes for the candle to burn depends on the amount of oxygen there is in the glass. So, what does this mean? Because the second glass was smaller, the oxygen was used up quicker and the candle went off. The candle in the first glass will take longer to burn because it has more oxygen trapped underneath it. As soon as the oxygen in the glass gets used up, the candle will go off. Safety with fire. Remember, all these fuels that we've learnt about can be dangerous if it is not used properly. Some of these fuels can be highly flammable and can cause serious damage to property, like cars, homes, forests, and also to yourself. Let's look at some precautions that we can take to prevent fires. Don't light fires on a windy day. Turn off cooking stoves when leaving the house. Extinguish all candles before going to bed. Do not play games with matches or fire lighters. These are a few examples of how we can prevent fires. Can you think of others? What did we learn? We learned that we get energy from the sun, energy is stored in fuels, coal, oil and natural gas are fossil fuels. We use energy today that was stored millions of years ago. Fuel is processed so that it can be used for transport. Fuels need oxygen gas to help them to burn. We need to take precautions when using fuels. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Goodbye.